Now, as conflict emerged in 1775, it became clear that war was coming. In this lesson, we provide an overview of the war, which will allow us to concentrate and focus on particular regions as the war progresses. Now, there were three main theaters of war in North America and also a fourth theater in the Atlantic Ocean. The theaters can be thought in this way. The Northern Theater was mostly focused on the colonies of New England and the Middle Colonies. So think Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, New York, and Rhode Island. It began in 1775 with the battles at Lexington and Concord. Most fighting among the armies occurred here in the first three wars. After about 1778, the British changed their tactics and stopped focusing so much in the North and instead began an effort in the Southern colonies. This was partly due to the fact that France and Spain began to act more aggressively in the Caribbean, meaning that the, that the British needed to defend further south. Much of the fighting after 1778 in the Northern Theater actually occurred between Native American groups and the colonial army. As the Native Americans pushed further south, many of them were allied with the British at this time, so there were a lot of skirmishes in the frontier. And also, New York City had been conquered by the British, and they used it as a staging ground to send out raids in the surrounding area. There was also a brief period of time in the Northern Theater when the American forces invaded Quebec, or Canada. Now, you'll recall that they had invited Canada to the Stamp Act Congress, and they invited Canada to the First Continental Congress. When Canada did not respond to these, they feared the British, who were very strong in Canada, would use it as a staging ground. So, in the Northern Theater, American forces attacked Canadians. Also, Native American groups were heavily recruited by both sides during this Northern Theater. Now, there's a second theater as well. We call this the Southern Theater. As I said, after 1778, the British kind of changed their tactics. And this began with the capture of Savannah in Georgia in 1778. It ended with the Siege of Yorktown in 1781, effectively ending the Revolutionary War. The British believed that the Southern colonies had more loyalists who would support the British cause. They thought if they went into the southern colonies that these loyalists would band together and join as a militia and that a civil war of sorts would actually start between the northern colonies and those in the south. Many wealthy landowners in the southern were in fact loyalists and they had overemphasized their number in order to get the British involved. This particular theater was characterized by significant British gains initially, where the American militia began fighting a retreating and guerrilla tactics sort of battle, which slowly weakened the British forces. There's also an overlooked Western theater in this American Revolution. The Western theater can be thought of as the land west of the Appalachian Mountains between the Appalachian Mountains and the Mississippi. This was Indian territory. And as settlers pushed over the Appalachian Mountains, which they continued to do, in fact, and sometimes to avoid further war, they came into conflict with the Native Americans, many of whom were allied with the British. So this was frontier fighting, and it took place in the states that would become Kentucky, Tennessee, West Virginia, Illinois, Ohio, and Missouri. This fe theater featured brutal tactics on both sides. They were unmerciful, killing non-combatants such as women and children and raiding settlements. Forts were rarely targeted, and most often it was civilian settlements that were targeted. It's difficult to determine sometimes which sides were fighting for which because the redcoats were not particularly present. Another thing to keep in mind is that as these hostilities pretty much lasted the entire war, from 1776 to 1783. Although conflict between the American and British forces ended in 1781, conflict with the Native Americans continued even through to 1783. There's one final theater I'd like to discuss, and that's the Atlantic Theater, or Combat on the High Seas. Most of this was centered around the Caribbean islands and also the American coast from about 1777 to 1782. American naval vessels raided the trade routes between Britain and Ireland and also raided British colonies in the Caribbean. 
America's Navy was insignificant compared to the British, but it did make notable, notable differences at times. The most significant naval conflicts happened between France and Spain on the one side and Britain on the other. France and Spain entered the war in order to capture some of the islands in the Caribbean. This forced the British to increase its military presence in the Caribbean and therefore decrease its presence in North America. If the British Army was in the Caribbean, or if the British Navy was in the Caribbean, it could not also be in the colonies. This allowed the colonies to trade with France and Spain and also thinned out the British ranks. Now, although most of these battles were fought at sea, the implication was felt on land. The Caribbean islands, for example, began to have food shortages, and in fact, many slaves starved during, the, during this war. French and British navies also fought alongside the Atlantic coast, most notably in the Chesapeake. My main point in overlooking these four theaters was to point out that almost all of North America was in conflict sometime during this war. And then after France and Spain entered the war, it truly became a global conflict.